Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'll be taking a look at Endless OS version 3.4. So it is based on Debian, but it's not just your average clone of Debian with a fancy desktop and a bunch of applications. No, no, it's actually not like that at all. So it is designed as being an operating system for developing nations, perhaps where internet accessibility is limited or very pricey. So it does provide an option of having a lot of the applications on the system. In fact, you get a two different choices on the ISO images to download. You get one that's about one gig and another one that is about 16 gig. And they even sell computers with the operating system pre-installed. So it doesn't just use the DEB package management. Nope, it uses an alternative. They're using Flatpak and OS Tree. And they provide a wide range of applications in the App Store, although it's not as complete as many other Linux distributions. Starting in my usual place at looking at the memory usage, we have about 750 meg of RAM at boot up. And in terms of resource usage, it is not particularly high. Although this is very deceptive because I was running the system with minimal resources, i.e. one CPU core, and it was being absolutely hammered to the extent it was not particularly usable. So I did have to increase the resources and I upped it to six CPU cores, which is perhaps a bit excessive, but that's what I decided to go with. Kind of makes it a bit more fairer compared to other distributions I've reviewed. And in terms of the kernel, it is version 4.15. So I'll take a quick look at the desktop first and then come back to the file system, which is a little bit more interesting for this distribution. So the desktop is a modified GNOME desktop and it's modified to the extent that it just shows the application launcher the whole time. I wouldn't think of it as being too fancy and too much of a deviation from the standard GNOME desktop. Searching for GNOME specific applications, in this case Nautilus, otherwise known as files, does bring up the file manager but it also brings up links to an offline encyclopedia I've installed. This is about five gig to download. So we do have direct links to the pages from encyclopedia. Let's open up file manager and you can see it's exactly the same as you would expect with Nautilus. The settings menu can be accessed on the bottom right hand side in the user menu, which also has the shutdown and like a standard GNOME desktop lacks the suspend button and that just really annoys me because why shouldn't I be able to suspend my desktop without having to press an extra key or installing an additional add-on? But that is my opinion. The settings menu is what you would expect from a standard GNOME desktop. Let's go back to the file system now. Looking at the disk usage gives us a clue of where the applications are installed. 14 gig is the file size for the sys root partition. And if I navigate across there and take a look at the folders, we have Flatpak and OS tree. Wandering down OS tree first gives us the boot menu. Actually, I wonder if I could access this from in files. Let's go back to the GUI interface. Uh, so we have locations, computer, sys root, yeah. That's a little bit nicer now, and I don't have to edit out keyboard typing. So yeah, OS tree, boot, boot 1.1. So a feature of OS tree, which is also known as lib OS tree, it is like Git in that it checks some individual files and has content addressed object store. It's unlike Git in that it checks out the files via hard links and they thus need to be immutable to prevent corruption. Therefore, another way to think of OS tree is just like a more polished version of Linux vServer hard links. So yeah, I did cheat and read that directly off the page. The other folder of interest is Flatpak, and these are the applications that are installed. So I suppose I haven't really looked at Flatpaks really. But yeah, um, just looking at the applications, so I can see this is where they are installed. They do end up a bit chunkier than they would normally as if they were packaged as deb files but you do have all the dependencies in one package. There are a couple of items in the dev package manager, and it does appear that there are some dev packages installed. Yeah, quite a few actually. It appears to be more related to the GNOME desktop, and I saw GStreamer there, and a couple of their own packages for endless OS. The browser of choice is Chromium, and I see they've installed that as a dev package as well, although they do offer Chrome as a flat pack as well as Firefox, but for some reason I can't actually install Firefox. So I'll take a look at the App Store and see some of the selection of applications that we can get. Indeed, Firefox is here. This just would not install for me. 
bit of an oddity here where it says download size of 2.3 gig and install size of 609k. Hmm. So quite a few of what looks like their own applications. Maybe I'm taking a bit of a guess of it being their own applications, but yes, it is. <laughs> Especially if they're linking to their own website. Yeah, that's got to be. So cooking recipes to try. There's quite a few educational programs included. So it does look like they have made it for, well, children and people within developing nations who may not be clued up on all this. Um, yeah, perhaps I'm taking that assumption, but what do you think about these choice of applications? Do they suit their target market? In my opinion, they do really, but for a day-to-day -day usage on someone more clued up on the operating systems, and particularly clued up with Linux, yeah, this is not going to be a distribution for you. But they're not necessarily selling themselves to be for you if that is the case, that you're a more advanced user. I noticed that Steam was included. Let's just try and find one. Actually, I could search for it. So there is a search button here. Steam. Yes, it is. This is the encyclopedia I was mentioning earlier. And that is 5 gig. Yeah, pretty chunky. Took quite a while to install, and this is what was particularly hammering my CPU. So hopefully I'll try to explain about the operating system now. Um, that's kind of about as far as I can go really because some of these applications just don't really work and I'm not blaming that on them specifically. I was having graphics issues earlier. My graphics card was being somewhat hammered by what I was doing and I don't have a spare computer accessible at the moment to me due to the fact I'm redecorating downstairs. But I've kind of piled up a load of furniture and inadvertently piled it on top of where a couple of computers were kept and I don't have my TV downstairs so yeah I'm just kind of literally struggling at the moment or space to put things. So yeah this is the problem anytime I try and open up one of their applications I can't really get further than the front screen it just sits there but I suppose it's interesting to see some of what they're talking about though. Farm animals, geese or goose goose because there's only one. Yeah, I can't read any further and that's and that's purely because of virtualization issues. This application puzzled me a bit though on WikiArt. Now this one doesn't seem to work properly but not for the reasons I was expecting. I mean, let's take that picture there. That is a picture by MC Escher, I would have said. I can't click on it to see any more about it because I just get this blank screen. But the search box here, I thought, oh, I'll just type in Escher and see what other pictures there are of his. And it doesn't find anything, which is weird. You had one of his pictures. And it seems rather than searching by artist, it searches for picture name. And let's just look at, um, oh, that one there on the left-hand side that has violin in the name. So violin, pipe, yeah. so it searches for that. That's a, that's a puzzle with one application. Behaviour on moving the applications around on the screen is what I would expect from GNOME. I suppose one thing to mention, it is nice to see how roomy the desktop can be without the fixed top application bar. And something else we do have at the top of the screen is this drop down that gives you the calendar date and well, links to articles and links to quotes and what's that word of the day? YouTube opens up Chromium as more as a fixed page, really. So you can just search around the YouTube website, but can't type in a different address. Yeah, that was look through endless OS. Has its purposes for the market it's trying to reach? Developing nations, for children, yeah. I can't say I'm interested in trying it on my system, but yeah, it wasn't aimed for me. The install process in endless OS was ridiculously simple, really. Is this version you'd like, if not download another? Okay. I agree to erasing all of my files and apps. Okay, fine, go for it. And that is it. That's your entire choices on the actual install. There's a few more options when you actually reboot and go through the final stages of the installation process. You go through the final stage of the install upon reboot. This part is a rather unwelcome guest in that we have a license agreement. Oh, not another open source application with a license agreement. 
What I do find a rather an interesting paragraph is on paragraph 6, termination of use, discontinuation and modification of the service. If you violate any provision of these terms, your permission to use the service will terminate automatically. Additionally, Endless, in its sole discretion, may suspend or terminate your access to the service at any time with or without notice. Uh, okay, but this operating system can be installed entirely on my hard drive, so how do you intend to disable my service? I did sit through here and read most of this. So yeah, I don't necessarily like agreeing to things if I haven't read them. And no, I'm not going to send usage statistics. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.